Life is a big school. We all have to learn. In the Arcadian region, on Mount Erymanthus, there was a huge and extremely fierce wild boar that often came down to the fields at the foot of the mountain and destroyed crops, causing harm to the lives of the people. Even those in the city of Sophus, at the foot of the mountain, were not afraid of it. Whenever it saw a human, it would charge straight at them. Thus, no hunter had been able to confront it, especially since there was no weapon that could pierce its thick, tough skin. Eurystheus tasked Hercules with capturing the wild boar alive. He thought that if he had tasked Hercules with killing the beast, it would not be difficult. But by tasking him with capturing it alive, he might be able to force Hercules to surrender to the difficulties. Hercules set out. On his way to Mount Erymanthus, he visited the wise centaur Pholus, a sincere and respectful friend of his. Pholus generously offered Hercules a rare, aged wine that he rarely served to guests, even those of his own half-human, half-horse race. The scent of the wine was so strong that even fish in the water and birds in the sky could smell it and crave it. The scent wafted out and angered Pholus's friends. They thought that Pholus had disrespected them by taking out the precious delicacy of the centaur race to serve someone who was not of their blood. So they came to cause trouble, and attacked the two friends who were happily drinking and chatting. Hercules quickly responded by grabbing the burning logs from the fireplace and throwing them at the centaurs. Knowing that nothing could be gained from this commotion, the centaurs advised each other to flee, but Hercules did not spare the rabble-rousers and pursued them all the way to Malaya. Along the way, they had to flee into the cave of the god centaur Chiron, a god who had taught many heroes and brave men all sorts of knowledge and wisdom. Hercules chased after them and shot his bow, killing some of them. But what caused him pain was that one of his arrows did not hit any of the ruffians, but instead hit the knee of his teacher, the highly skilled and wise centaur Chiron. How could he be cured now? Hercules could only bow his head and ask for forgiveness for his mistake. Chiron knew that he could not survive, so he voluntarily left the world of glory and the light of the sun to live in the dark realm of the god Hades. Hercules left, feeling sad. He thought about how to capture the animal. He knew that he could not catch up to it by chasing it. He had to wait until the cold snow fell. And it was true. When the snow had covered the mountain and the fields, Hercules found the animal's den. With a thunderous roar, he frightened the animal out of its den and chased after it, shouting. The snow was thick, and every step he took caused him to sink deeper, so it was not long before the animal became exhausted and collapsed. Hercules just had to come and grab it by the neck, tie it up tightly, and carry it on his shoulders back to present it to Eurystheus. The king trembled at the mere sight of it. He panicked and ran into a bronze jar that he had prepared as a hiding place for himself in times of danger. He sat there until he heard the news that Hercules had left, and only then did he regain his composure and come out of the jar. <laughs> 